Understanding Lung Cancer. This is one of a series of cancer videos that can be found on the website aboutcancer.com. This video is about understanding the disease, the anatomy, imaging, the staging system, and a simple discussion of the treatment options. The odds of getting this cancer is relatively low, but it's the most lethal cancer and accounts for more than a fourth of cancer deaths. The odds of the cancer is heavily related to smoking. A non-smoker is quite small. A former smoker is much better than a current smoker. Heavy smokers have the highest risk. There are calculators on the website that will calculate the actual odds of developing lung cancer if you are a smoker. The risk of getting lung cancer in a non-smoker is less than a half of a percent, but in a heavy smoker, particularly in men, it can be as high as 20 or 30 percent. The five-year survival over the last 20 or 30 years has only gone up to 17 percent, and even patients with earlier local disease have a fairly poor survival with lung cancer. There are calculators on the website that will calculate the survival after surgery with or without chemotherapy. The symptoms of lung cancer are nonspecific and not very helpful. Coughing, shortness of breath, chest pain. Coughing up blood or hoarseness is certainly a worrisome sign. The median age of a lung cancer patient is 65, but about 25% of the patients may be in their 40s or 50s. Most cancers are called non-small cell cancer under the microscope, and adenocarcinoma is the most common type within that group. A biopsy will confirm the diagnosis either at bronchoscopy or CAT scan biopsy. And again, non-small cell in the most recent statistics is most common, particularly adenocarcinoma. The pathologist will determine the type. He may do special stains to clarify the source. He may do molecular diagnostic studies to look for evidence of genetic mutations. Genetic mutations such as EGFR, KRAS, or ALK may determine the use of targeted therapy such as Tarceva or Avastin. The anatomy of the lung is primarily a bronchi, bronchial tubes, and air sacs called alveoli. Cancer generally starts in one of the bronchi or bronchial tubes. The bronchi subdivide into smaller bronchial tubes throughout the lungs. The lungs are very vascular. There's extensive blood vessels, so there is a risk of bleeding. There are three lobes on the right, two lobes on the left. The lung subdivides into segments of pulmonary lobes, and these can all be numbered and labeled. More important are the lymph nodes in the chest. The lymph nodes on the side are called hilum, or N1 nodes. This would be stage 2. Lymph nodes in the middle or mediastinum are called N2 and would make a patient stage 3. Again, the lymph nodes are numbered and labeled, and there are diagrams that will clarify this. Imaging typically starts with a chest x-ray and leads to a CAT scan and probably a PET scan. The anatomy on a chest x-ray is somewhat limited. The anatomy that can be found on a CAT scan is much more detailed. This is a series of cross-section anatomy through the chest. Again, these slides can be paused, but it shows all the detailed anatomy in the chest, particularly the location of the lymph nodes in the middle of the chest that can be found on a CT or PET CT is particularly important for both staging and treatment decisions. A PET scan uses radioactive sugar or glucose and this will light up the areas of the malignancy and will separate a gray area on a CAT scan from a cancer area. PET scans are very helpful in identifying and locating lymph nodes in the mediastinum of the chest. The next few slides are a series of hyalur or mediastinal lymph nodes identified on a PET CT and very useful in the proper staging and treatment of lung cancer patients. A PET scan also will separate cancer from collapsed lung or pleural fluid or other benign structures in the chest. This is very helpful for the radiation oncologist in targeting the cancer. Stage 1 would be a small spot with no nodes. Stage 2, a larger tumor with lymph nodes on the side, N1 lymph nodes. Stage 3, involvement of the middle section or mediastinum or N2 lymph nodes would put you into stage 3. And stage 4 would be areas of metastases. Unfortunately, lung cancer commonly spreads to the brain, 
bone, or liver. Most patients nationally are in stage 3 or stage 4, particularly small cell cancer of the lung. The details of the staging system are called T, N, M, T for tumor, N for lymph nodes, and M for metastases. And these are then grouped into staging groups or categories. Again, any of these slides can be paused. Small cell cancer of the lung is almost never stage 1 or 2, usually a large mediastinal mass in the chest. And small cell will commonly divide it into either limited stage, limited to the chest, or extensive stage if there are evidence of metastases. The best advice on treatment is often found on the website of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, which is a network of academic cancer centers. Their website is nccn.org and always has the most current treatment advice. The treatments are now quite complicated or complex. The patient may ask to have his doctor review the current NCCN treatment guidelines with them. There is a site for patients called nccn.com that may be more appropriate for patients. In simple terms, stage 1 and 2 patients are treated with surgery or highly targeted radiation, and stage 3 or 4 patients, commonly chemotherapy with or without radiation. All the details can be found on the website about cancer.com, including the calculators, the PowerPoint slides, other videos, and the links to all the other best websites.